Welcome to the Click Podcast. I'm Danny Watson, a mindset and manifestation expert and founder of The Click, a company that helps women overcome their fears and limiting beliefs to create a life and business that they love. Within this podcast, I will help you get clear on what you want, identify the blocks that are holding you back, transform your mindset and raise your vibration so that you can co-create magic with the universe. If you are looking to design a life that truly sets your soul on fire and manifest more success and abundance, then you are in the right place. Hello ladies and welcome to a brand new week. I have got a special episode for you for this week. We have put together the best of clips from my podcast episodes over the last few years. Um, And I thought this would be a really good way to recap on some of the nuggets of wisdom that I have shared on this podcast. So I hope you enjoy this episode, ladies, and I will catch you on the next episode. The majority of who we are is this subconscious automatic program, which is just running on rinse and repeat. Now, the conscious mind, which is the very small tip of the iceberg, it has the ability to make all of these big, bold statements about what it wants in life. I want to do work I love. I want to be successful. I want to have, you know, money in the bank. I want an amazing relationship. I want to feel free. I want to be, you know, financially wealthy. But the truth is, every single day when we wake up, we are living from the same identity. Even, and I'm speaking even to the people who think I've got this under control because I'm doing my morning ritual. Are you doing that by default or is it something that you're consciously stepping into with emotion? Because often we are, I definitely am guilty for this. I've, I've in the past, I found myself just kind of getting into this what I thought was a really great routine with my morning ritual, realizing that it had just become another distraction tool, another way to sort of distract myself from my problems or how I was feeling. So these automatic programs then are what creates our identity. And, you know, what we then do is we keep producing pretty much the same kinds of experiences, relationships, finances, everything stays the same within our life. Our future perpetuates our past. Now, there's a way out of this cycle, and it's not just as simple as starting an intentional morning routine, because I've done this, and I found that it helped for a short while, but as soon as that came, you know, an automatic doing it on autopilot, rinse and repeat kind of routine, I found that it stopped having the impact on my life that it used to. So it's not just be about being intentional, but there is a way out of this cycle, But my message to you, first of all, is do not wait until the pain or suffering is so great before you decide to change. And, you know, this is the same for many of us as well. We live our lives on autopilot and it often takes for a crisis for us to wake up and say things need to change. But why wait? And this is what I keep kind of reminding myself now, like, Don't allow yourself to get to that point of crisis before you make significant changes in your life. Because I think to myself, well, if I was able to create all of this amazing things from that place of rock bottom, imagine what I'm able to create if I'd have started everything from that place of joy and inspiration. What is available to you if rather than starting your journey from a place of pain and suffering, you're able to start it from that place of joy and inspiration? You know, often change takes, you know, something drastic to happen in our relationships, in our health, in our career, in our finances, before we truly fully commit to embracing change. So my kind of one underlying message through this podcast is just don't wait to start. Getting what we want in life starts with being able to see that thing first. And this is where visualization for me, I was able to create this image of the woman that I wanted to become. And I just want to make a point clear here. This isn't about becoming somebody you're not. So this isn't about, you know, becoming this super extrovert 
confident person who's really loud and really outgoing if that is not not naturally who you are. Confidence doesn't always need to look that way. You get to define what confidence actually means to you. And probably I should have mentioned this first, actually. That's probably a good place to start. What does confidence mean to you? And part of the visualization process can be defining what confidence means to you. Because confidence for one person might look completely different. For, um, for, uh, co- confidence for one person may be diff- completely different than it is for another person. So, If you were to step into your most confident self, what would that look like? And this is where you want to think about what's going to feel good to you. Um, So as I said, so confidence isn't about becoming somebody you're not, but it's about tapping into what is already there. Okay, tapping into who you are meant to be. And that's the thing. It's not about becoming somebody else. It's about realizing that you already have these amazing qualities and skills and, um, you know, things within you that you're perhaps not allowing to shine through. And confidence is about embracing those things unapologetically rather than becoming, you know, as I said, like Beyonce or whatever. (laughs) So the visualization process then starts with identifying what does confidence mean to you? What does that look like? And for me, let me give you an example for this. For me, when I thought about confidence, I asked myself, what would that look like? And one of the first images that came up was me speaking in front of a room of people, giving a talk and just being really self-assured in my own skin. So being somebody that could be in front of a group of people and speak her truth and speak her message and not be shy about that and not worry about, will people like me? Will people criticize me? And when I thought of that image, I really was able to connect with that scene vividly. So I remember thinking about an image where I would walk onto the stage and as I did so, it wasn't a big deal for me. It was just completely natural and normal and it felt exciting and it felt fun rather than this thing that would make me freeze up. And I would think about this scene where I was speaking to a room full of people who were engaged, who were listening, who really were enjoying what I was sharing with them. And this scene was something that I kept coming back to time and time again. And one of the things that I did in the very early stages of my business was I was going to, um, I was taking part in a lot of in-person events where I'd be a guest speaker at various different events. And it was a great way for me to really step into that confident role. But before I could actually, you know, actually go ahead and do that, I really had to practice this visualization technique first. So really connecting with the scene where I was in front of a room full of people, I was speaking my message. And what exactly did that look like for me? So you might have a particular scenario in mind where you want to create more confidence for yourself. What does that look like? And really involve yourself in the scene. So, you know, think about what you're wearing, how you're carrying yourself. The more vividly you can put yourself into that moment, the more it's going to feel like it's actually happened for you. Now, what's really, really interesting is that the subconscious mind cannot distinguish between events that you've imagined and events that have really happened, okay? Especially if when you are imagining a specific event, you're really getting into the nitty gritty of the details. And so what does that mean then if the subconscious mind can't tell whether something has happened or it hasn't? Well, remember that the subconscious mind dictates how you show up. So if you have played out this scenario in your mind multiple times where you're this confident woman, where maybe you're speaking on stage or maybe you're, I don't know, connecting with your audience or maybe there's something else you want to do that really signifies, signals confidence for you. If you've played that out multiple times, your subconscious mind thinks it's happened and that's going to affect how you then physically show up. Your subconscious mind dictates how you show up in the real world. And so 
over time, what you're going to find is you will naturally start to show up as that confident woman. You've played it through in your head so many times that your subconscious mind tells you, I already am her. This is already who I am. Trying to figure out our purpose in you know just one day or in a short space of time, it's almost like putting a lot of pressure on ourselves. So rather than trying to have it all figured out in one go, start with what you do know, start from there. And a really good exercise here is an exercise around connecting with how you want to feel. Okay, so quite often we may not know exactly what our purpose is, that exact career path or that exact business idea. But chances are you probably have a good understanding of the emotions that you want to feel. Okay, and that's where you want to start. So it might be knowing that you want to feel freedom. You want to feel that you have more freedom. You may want to feel creative. Now, what's really powerful about getting clear on what you do know now? So how do you want to feel? Like what kind of values do you want from your path? What kind of qualities and skills do you want to be able to utilize on your path? The more you start getting clear on what you do know, the clearer you will start to get on the things that you don't yet know. Clarity breeds more clarity, okay? So remember, the law of attraction, what we focus on expands. So again, if you're saying like, oh, I don't know what I want, and you're constantly focusing on what you don't yet know, you're going to create more uncertainty. You're gonna create a, a, more of a lack of clarity. But when you start feeling more clear on what you do know, that clarity, as, as I said, will breed more clarity and answers will start to appear. One of the beautiful um, quotes that I love, um, and I think this is a Martin Luther King quote, and he says, you don't need to have to see the whole staircase. You just need to be able to take that first step. And this is really, you know, this step here is really embodies that quote. You know, you don't have to have it all figured out straight away. Start with what you do know and the path will start to unfold for you. How can we avoid this comparison trap when it actually is derailing you in some way? It's actually making you feel worse and rather than it feeling better. Now, one phrase I like to use quite often with our students is this idea of staying in your own lane, okay? So if you are in a position right now and comparing yourself to others is making you feel crap, like why would you purposefully and intentionally do something that you know makes you feel worse, okay? You know, as humans, one of the things that, you know, we're looking to achieve by being alive is to feel good, right? One of the purposes, I believe, of being here and having this human experience is for the joy of it, is to feel good, is to feel great doing it. The reason why we want to do most things in our life is because we feel that by doing those things or by having certain things, we're going to feel better for it. But if you know, if you know and you're aware that comparing yourself to others normally makes you feel negative about yourself, why would you intentionally go and do it? And I was thinking about this. I was like, well, why, why would we intentionally do the things that make us feel bad? And I think the first thing is the fact that there perhaps isn't any intention behind it. Often when we compare ourselves, it's not like we've decided, okay, you know what? I'm going to sit down for 20 minutes on social media and start looking at other people's images and start feeling shit about myself because my life doesn't add up to theirs. Nobody intentionally sits down with that plan, right? <laughs> so what, what's happening now? What's going on? Often these are things that we do. These are activities that we do without any intention. You know, we're just going through the motions, we're just doing it, and we're just being a bit mindless about it, we're being a bit thoughtless of it. You know, how many times do you wake up in your morning, or maybe you just throughout your day, and you grab your phone, and the next thing you know, you are scrolling. You're scrolling, and you've ended up on somebody's 
probably somebody who you don't even know, let's face it. You've landed up on their Instagram stories or you're looking at their, their images and, you know, it seems that they're living their best life while you're at home feeling miserable. Have you sat down and purposely said, I'm going to go through Instagram for half an hour and see if I can make myself feel miserable? No, you've not. (laughs) It's just something that you've kind of fallen into, this like negative habit that you've acquired that you just go through the motions and you do it without really real intention behind it. So that would be the first thing. Like if you're about to do any type of activity, Rather than just it being something that becomes habitual, learn to put some intention behind it. Learn to start asking yourself, why am I doing this? And is this really serving me? Because, you know, you could decide, you know, I am going to go and sit down on social media for half an hour. And the reason I am doing so is for this purpose. And it could be a purpose that really serves you. So maybe it's, let's say you are a business owner or you're a coach and you're thinking, I'm going to sit down for half an hour and, you know, start building some connections on social media. And there's some real kind of positive intention behind that. Or you might decide that, you know what, comparison does make me feel good. So I'm going to sit down for 20 minutes and I'm going to look at other women that inspire me and and see their success as a reason for why I could be successful too. So take a step back before you do anything. And this is, this is a really good habit to get into with anything that you do. Be mindful about what you're giving your energy to in any given moment and ask yourself, is what I'm focusing on right now really serving me? How is it making me feel? Is it focusing on things that I want to happen? Is it focusing on my life from a place of abundance or from a place of lack? Because you're going to start realizing that your energy is being distracted by things that aren't necessarily serving you. Who would I be and how would I show up in this world if I no longer required the validation and approval of others? So this is to start getting you thinking about, you know, what a difference it would make in your life if you let go of that need for validation. How could you show up more differently? How could you start showing up for yourself and your dreams more if you no longer required validation and approval of others? Now, on a practical note here, this is where you might want to write down a list. It doesn't need to take a long time, but where you just write down, you know, if I wasn't relying on the validation or approval of others, what would, what might I be doing differently? How may I be showing up for my dreams differently? How may I come into my business differently? Now, I just want to talk about, you know, why we actually have this need to be validated or accepted. Because what I don't want you to do is to think that this is something that is wrong with you, you know, to see this as a weakness, because that's not going to help the situation either. It is perhaps something you want to change, but I don't want to necessarily see you beating yourself up. So if you're somebody that constantly looks for validation or approval from others, it isn't a bad thing. Know that this is just part of how we are hard wired as humans. Back when we were very much sort of tribal in nature and living in tribes, we we had to conform to the group. You know, there was this need to conform, conform because if we were seen as separate from the group, we would often be expelled from our tribes. It could even mean death. And so we have adopted this you know, this mindset whereby we have this instinctive need to be validated and accepted because of, you know, how we've kind of been conditioned over time. Now, a lot of us don't live in these tribal communities anymore, but the same types of principles still exist in where we are, where we are hardwired to want to belong, to want to conform. And, you know, and that's not a bad thing in a lot of situations, you know, that, conformity, that social conformity can often serve us. But there's a lot of times where it does hold us back as well. And often it's when we are going on a different path or we want to pursue different things or we have different ideas or values from others. You know, often we feel bad about or we don't even allow ourselves to pursue those different things because we don't have the validation and acceptance of others.
don't judge an action. So when you're trying to figure out, you know, is something inspired action, should I be doing this? Don't judge that action on whether it is inspired action and or not or not from the place of the amateur. Because then it will always be the ego talk talking. So what I mean by the amateur here is, you know, something that you've never done before, something that's outside of your comfort zone, something that you've never really fully experienced or allowed yourself to, to get good at, okay? When you are judging a, an action step that you need to take from that place of the amateur, it's always gonna be the ego talking, right? Because the ego is there to keep you safe. When it's doing something outside of your comfort zone, the ego is always going to kick in and say, don't do that. Don't put yourself out there. Don't show up. You don't need to do that. Stay here, over here where it's safe, okay? When we step into the unknown, that is when the ego talks the loudest. The unknown is when our fears are the loudest. And then it's very easy to convince ourselves that, oh, I'm not meant to be doing this. You have to experience something properly before being able to fully assess whether or not that thing is meant for you. The mistake is to assume that inspired action will always feel light, joyful, and fun. So this is the thing, right, with inspired action. You know, it's action that keeps us as an in alignment. It's supposed to be light, you know, playful, exciting, but it perhaps won't feel like that in the beginning. In fact, to begin with, inspired action may feel quite the opposite. It may feel uncomfortable, but doing things outside of your comfort zone is going to provide you with the biggest opportunities for growth. So we shouldn't just avoid doing those things because to begin with, they seem uncomfortable. Now remember that action neutralizes fear. So the best way to figure out if it is your fear talking, if it's your ego, or if it is in fact your intuition, is to take the action. Neutralize your fear and then assess whether it's something that you are being called to do. Remember that our ego is always gonna speak the loudest in the moments when we're faced with something outside of our comfort zone. When you take action to do the thing you're afraid of and then neutralize that fear, the ego is then silenced and we can then hear what our higher wisdom is telling us. Now, there is a difference. There's a difference between being okay with what you have right now while still committed to your bigger dreams. That is okay. You can be fine and at peace with where you're at whilst still having that commitment to your bigger dreams. There's a difference between that and settling. Settling is not okay. And I want you to remind you actually here that there is no shame in setting a big goal and missing. Okay, sometimes people worry too much about, well, what if I have this goal and I miss it? You know, I, I fell first time round. There is no shame in that. I would much rather see the women that I work with set big goals and miss them completely rather than settling for less than what they truly desire. Because settling creates a totally different kind of energy. When you're in that energy of settling, I'll be happy with that, that's good enough. This creates an energy that I feel is very similar to the energy of giving up. When we lower the bar, we've already taken ourselves out of the game because we don't come into our business with the same level of motivation and determination. When your dreams are big, there is no choice but to step up and go all in because you've got these really big dreams. You have to get out of your comfort zone. You have to take big, scary, massive action. But when your dreams are smaller, when you lower the bar, when you settle, you can actually let yourself off the hook for a lot of that stuff. You don't need to show up as much. You don't need to get up early, work late, sacrifice. You don't need to take that big, scary action because your dreams don't require as much. You've settled, you've set the bar a lot lower. But all of that stuff, getting out of the comfort zone, the resilience, the determination, the big, scary, massive action, all of that stuff is so important. The scary stuff, the things that feel risky, the things that come with the fear of judgment, it's doing those things that are also going to shape you into the woman you need to become to get you to where you want to be. 
It's those things that you do that provide the biggest opportunities for growth. So what you're doing when you lower the bar is you are delaying that transformation. You are um, prohibiting yourself from having that transformation. You are denying yourself the opportunity for that transformation because you've lowered the bar. And that transformation is so integral to your desires, okay? A conviction to your big dreams means that you are going to keep doing the stuff that you need to do. Face those challenges head on and experience the breakthroughs that you will then have off the back of those challenges. Remember, those challenges are important. That growth doesn't come from things being easy. Growth comes in our biggest times of adversity. When you lower the bar, you make the challenge easier and therefore there is less room for you to grow. Now, when you've come up with your, you know, your ideal day of like what you spend time on, well, you know, what inspired action steps that you're doing within your business over the course of the week, you then need to reinforce that doing those things is enough to get you to where you want to be. You don't need to do no more. You don't need to show up more. You don't need to be more. What you've done is enough. And that is really important, that belief of enoughness. Because if you don't have that, what you're going to find yourself doing is you, you do the things, you know, you work in a way that feels good. And then that little voice creeps in saying, you could be doing a little bit more. You know, you're relaxing now. You could be spending, you know, this time now creating more posts, creating more content. You need to find where your sweet, sweet spot is between inspired action and forcing things, pushing things. And normally the, the, the trick here is to feel into your body. Where is that urge to do something coming from? Is it coming from this place of expansion and excitement? And oh my goodness, I just want to be doing, doing, doing. And because I love doing it and I'm just in the flow and I'm in the zone and I want to keep going. Or is it coming from that place of, oh, I need to keep doing this. I need to keep going. It's, you know, I should be doing this. From that place of fear, panic, desperation. What is the driving force behind the action that you're taking? And everybody's going to be different with this. And this is where you need to find your own individual sweet spot. Like where do you rest in the balance between the masculine and the feminine energy? The masculine very much being this, you know, this doing kind of energy. Okay. Why we often cling to our limiting beliefs is because it's human nature to want to be right, okay? We love to be right, of course we do. Like, who doesn't want to be right at things? It feels our ego takes a bash when we are wrong. So if somebody comes along and challenges you on something that you have adopted as your truth for so long, it is so easy to get defensive about things. So let's just think of an example here. Let's think about when you had a discussion with somebody who believed something completely different to you. How did that make you feel? Now, I want you to think back to that situation and I want you to ask yourself honestly, did it make you question your belief or did it make you stand by your belief and protect it even more? And here's the thing, often this is where our ego starts to kick in. Our ego wants us to be right. And this is where sometimes our beliefs, we get defensive over them. Our desire to be right can overpower our ability to transform. It can sometimes be a difficult pill to swallow to realize that a lot of what we've believed over the years is not actually fat. We haven't been right on these things. A part of us doesn't want to believe this because we don't want to have been wrong, especially if we've been wrong for so many years. And this is where evidence that challenges the belief is going to be required. So let's just go back and going back to you and that friend, having a discussion about something you both believe, you know, you've both got completely different beliefs on. But then let's say your prevent, friend prevents you, um, presents you rather with evidence so compelling that you have no choice but to question your belief. 
okay? Let's say she presents to you all of this powerful evidence as to why her belief is true. And then it, you, you then start to question yourself. You start to question your belief system. Now, at this point, your ego may take a bit of a bash in admitting that you were perhaps wrong, but your belief will also begin to waver. And this is sometimes what we need in order to challenge a belief, evidence to the contrary. And this is something you can do right now. Find evidence that proves your belief system to be wrong. So if you believe that hitting seven figures, let's say you want to become a million pound business, um, business owner, you want to have a, a million pound business, but let's say that you believe right now that doing that means never seeing your kids. Go and find somebody who is living proof that hitting that income goal while spending quality time with their family is possible. Well, I think one of my favorite quotes that I wanna recite here is by JK Rowling, who once famously said, it is impossible to live without failing at something, unless you live so cautiously that you might as well have not lived at all, in which case you fail by default. And I resonate with this so much. When you tiptoe through life, trying to avoid failure, you avoid life itself. You avoid the chance to live life in your highest possible capacity. Now, creating a magical life is inevitably going to involve some sort of failures along the way. No rain, no flowers, right? So I challenge you to find somebody that you deeply respect and admire who hasn't achieved some sort of setback in their life. Okay, so in fact, I'm going to go so far as to say that those who have achieved the most have often been challenged with the greatest amount of adversity. So failure is something that you have to accept as being a part of the journey to reaching your fullest potential. How do you deal with that? How do you start on this process or move through the process knowing that at some point that you're going to fail? Almost expecting that at some point you will fail. How do you deal with that? How do you actually um, pluck up the courage to even start knowing that failure is going to be on the cards for you? How do you move forwards? Because it's a scary thing, right? Accepting that failure is going to happen. You know, it's one thing to hope that it won't, but it's quite another thing to say, yeah. At some point, I'm going to fail and I'm at peace with that. It's not something we are often easily able to come to terms with. We want to avoid failure because we associate failure with pain, with rejection, with judgment. But I want to invite you to start seeing failure differently. I want you to start seeing it as an integral part of the journey to getting to where you want to be. Failure has to become one of your non-negotiables. And I want to just kind of get you to think about something here. So take a second to just imagine that you are on a desert island, okay? So your desires and the life that you've always dreamed of, they're on another desert island. So you can, you're basically on island A and everything you could ever possibly want is on that island B. Now, separating you where you are now on island A and that dream life is the sea, right? The deep blue sea. I now want you to imagine a bridge connecting the two islands. Now your gateway to the life of your wildest dreams is that bridge, okay? It's the only thing that's going to get you from that island A to that island B. And that bridge, its name is failure. It is the only route to your desire. You've got to cross that bridge if you want to get to the other side. Without failure, your goals wouldn't manifest. Now, you might be thinking, well, maybe it's the only bridge to get me to the other side, but I'd like to request the speedboat. I'm going to bypass the bridge entirely. Sorry, this isn't possible. It does not work like that. You've got to go via the failure route. It's the only way. And I now want to explain why. The reason for this is because the goal is never just about what you want to have. Now, yes, there may be lots of stuff on that island, the money, the luxury travel, the dream home, the success, but all of that stuff alone 
will not make you fulfilled. The goal is to also feel a certain way when we get there. It's about reaching your goals, but having expanded into the highest possible version of you along the way. It's about stepping into your power as you step towards your goals. Stepping into your power as the woman who is confident in who she is and what she stands for. The woman who radiates self-love and acceptance. The woman who is an inspiration to others. The woman who is totally at peace with herself and her world. The woman who knows she's reached her fullest potential. And that woman, that woman isn't born out of her wins. She is sculpted by her failures. Often when we look at things that haven't worked out, we focus on what we are lacking. This didn't lead me to this outcome. I wasn't able to gain anything from this experience. I lost my confidence. I lost that relationship. I lost that job. I wasn't able to make the money. We think about our setbacks from this place of lack, what we have lost versus what we have gained and gain in a positive way. And obviously, if we are focused on lack, what we are going to create is therefore more lack. So, you know, if we focus on not being good enough, what's going to happen in the next series of our life is that those thoughts creep back in. I'm not good enough. And we create these environments when we feel not good enough and therefore don't end up creating the results that we want. Don't put ourselves forwards in the way that we are meant to. So looking at what has been, how can you flip the narrative and focus on what you have gained from that experience? So what what have those setbacks taught you? What have you learned about yourself from those setbacks? In what way have those setbacks helped you to grow? Can you, rather than seeing these things as setbacks, can you actually see them as steps forward? Can you actually see them as stepping stones that are designed to get you to where you want to go? So really sort of flipping the narrative and rather than being resentful about the things that have gone wrong, actually embracing those things and actually looking at them from a place of gratitude, from a place of love. Like these are the things that I needed to help me to get to where I am now. And these are a stepping stone and a launch pad to, you know, push me further into my desires and my dreams. If you are wanting to build your own successful online coaching business, make sure to check out Freedom, Abundance and Impact, our free 10-day business and mindset course for coaches and aspiring coaches. To access, simply head to wearetheclick.com and click free course in the menu.